This is a really important story that I'd like to revisit from exactly a year ago today, October 30th. This was written in 2019 on this very day. I thought that this article was so extremely important to revisit because I think it was pretty well overlooked. And this tells us exactly what the Sanhedrin intends to do in the future as a world court. Adam Eliyahu Berkowitz wrote this October 30th, 2019, and it's titled, Palestinians Turn to Sanhedrin Organization of 70 Nations Accept Role in Third Temple. Now isn't that a bit of a surprise to have this article sort of overlooked last year? Because it says in September the Sanhedrin hosted the first conference for the Organization of 70 Nations. And of course that was um, September 2019. The Sanhedrin hosted the first conference for the Organization of 70 Nations. The organization will bring together all of the nations under the common belief in the sanctity of the Bible and the sanctity of all mankind. The Sanhedrin sent out invitations to many nations in many languages. This included invitations in Arabic and Persian to nations that have openly declared aggression towards Israel since the Sanhedrin was acting as the emissary of the Bible and not in any political interest or as the representatives of the state of Israel. The Sanhedrin has received responses from several nations since the conference from the most unexpected sources, a Pashtun, political figure from Afghanistan, Nigeria, Cameroon, and others. One such response came from a respected academic Palestinian scholar who lives in Judea. The scholar must remain anonymous since there are elements in the Palestinian Authority and in Palestinian society that use violent methods against Palestinians who advocate normalization of relations between Jews and Arabs. In other words, coexistence between Muslims and Jews. He contacted the Sanhedrin and wants to work with us. This is what they said. He has a group of students he is educating to follow this path, Rabbi Hillel Weiss, spokesman for the Sanhedrin, told Breaking Israel News. He recognizes the biblical basis for Israel and accepts them. He accepts that the only legitimate rule in the land of Israel is from the Jews and that the historical truth that Jewish temples once stood on the Temple Mount and he wants the Palestinian people to be part of the Organization of Seventy Nations and is aware this includes a biblically mandated Sanhedrin Court of Nations and a third temple as a house of prayer for all nations. Quote, this man sees that the current political environment in this region is an outside force that engenders murder and violence creating a culture that is not in the true nature of the Palestinian people and is, in fact, destroying the Palestinians. The Palestinians cannot exist as a nation if they do not establish justice to deal with murder and violence. He recognizes that the UN, and especially the UNRWA, have served as tools to bring this foreign political agenda into the Palestinian nation, an agenda that is not for the good of the Palestinians as a nation. He wants to break the connection with the UN and bring the true Palestinian people to their place among the 70 nations. He understands this requires establishing courts of justice according to the laws of Noah. The conference seems to have been a spark that ignited a consciousness in many people, Rabbi Weiss said. There are many obstacles such as funding, but the main difficulties are political, governments that prefer war over peace, politics over Bible and serving God. But these are representatives of a deeper force in the world that choose death over life, using darkness and lies to obscure the truth. Rabbi Weiss noted that the organization comes to fix a shortcoming that was inherent in the founding of the UN. 
The UN relates to international relations, he said. It deals with political entities. This is not our intent. There are many nations, minorities, that do not have a political body to represent them. Native Americans, Aborigines, and Kurds should have a representative among the 70 nations. It is a huge injustice that they are not represented in the UN to judge in their relations with the countries they live in. The host country has responsibilities towards the nations that live within it, Rabbi Weiss said. The UN does not relate to this at all, and injustices happen as a result from the outset. The UN mishandled the Palestinian claim as a nation. The International Court in The Hague failed because there can be no peace based on injustice and lies. The organization of the 70 nations will be tasked with establishing a true court of justice. The members of the organization agree to the sanctity of Jerusalem and the temples, as well as the sanctity of God's covenant, established with all of mankind through Noah. Every nation and ethnic group that sees itself as part of humanity and therefore accepts responsibility to join in a universal covenant of brotherhood of peace is invited to take their place in this organization of 70 nations. Representatives from El Salvador, Mexico, Honduras, Bolivia, Trinidad, Tobago, Cameroon, and Costa Rica were in attendance. Very interesting that they used the universal covenant of brotherhood of peace in that sentence. You know, the covenant with many. Another purpose of the conference and the organization of the 70 nations is to begin the return of the lost ten tribes of Israel. The concept of 70 nations is from the Bible and symbolizes the basis for the organization while not being intended to imply a limit or requirement for participation. The concept of 70 nations also appears in reference to the 70 oxen offered in the temple throughout Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles, which the Talmud Sukkah 55b teaches are for the merit of the 70 nations. While maintaining that the UN can still repent and change its ways, the Sanhedrin has ruled that the actions of the UN that contravene the Noahide principles that are the basis upon which humanity exists. One example of this is the UN agenda to promote abortion and euthanasia as human rights. The Organization of 70 Nations is expected to enable cooperation towards economic and social programs that will benefit all mankind. Included in this will be an international court based on biblical principles. The court will be granted the mandate to protect the globe from ecological threats, mobilizing resources to stop hunger, and advance agriculture and advancing medicine for the good of all mankind. So basically, a one-world governing body. The organization emphasizes that every nation will keep its unique and distinct national identity, cultural heritage, language, and recognized borders. Now this next part is what I was really wanting to get to, to read to you. It says, the principles of the organization of 70 nations are listed below. One, the emergence of the light of law and kindness and its manifestation from Zion in Jerusalem, the city of David, is the basis of the messianic vision that indicates the concept of the end of days. Two, carrying out justice and grace by virtue of God's law from the place of enlightenment from Zion, the city of justice, the faithful town is a prerequisite for peace among peoples, nations, and states, just as peace between them constitutes peace among all nations of the world. So in other words, they want to rule this world court through the Sanhedrin in Jerusalem and replace the UN governing body as the world court in Jerusalem. Number three law, truth, justice, and mercy, and their implementation bring peace to the entire world. Four, 
Justice does not attempt to replace the concept of the Messiah. Rather, it aims to draw inspiration from the prophetic passages through which it seeks to operate. 5. The source of all peoples of the world came from those who left the ark, those descendants of the sons of Noah, who were dispersed to all ends of the world after they rebelled against God and divided into 70 factions, nations, and linguistic groups. Their borders changed. Their actions resulted from their jealousies and competition as exemplified by the story of Cain, the son of Adam and Eve, who killed his brother Abel out of jealousy. Both individuals and groups operate with the same motivations. Therefore, there is a clear need for an international legal institution that deals with justice and carries out justice according to the laws of God, the most important of which are biblical laws. 6. Judgment must be carried out according to laws, fixed laws, and not result from induction or inspiration. Legal duty is the cornerstone of the Noahite covenant according to concepts of fairness and accepted custom in legal terms. So now you know they're talking about the Noah covenant. 7. A major role of the court is to prevent injustice, violence, robbery, and trampling of rights among others. The court exists to judge and admonish people, states, and nationalities in order to prevent hostility, to return stolen property from those who exploit it, to prevent destruction and vandalization of lands and countryside, and indeed of all creation. Its overriding purpose is to bring peace to the world and prevent warfare and bloodshed. Eight. Wherever UN treaties and their courts, including recognized international courts, do not contradict the basic tenets of the Bible and its universal laws, they will remain valid and accepted, as will their decisions, actions, legal theories, and legal traditions, including principles of natural law and justice, normative and accepted laws of evidence. 9. The court will decide disputes and prefer arbitration over trials. 10. The court will not intervene in decisions of the above international tribunals that have no provable basic errors unless they contradict the laws of the Bible as interpreted and applied to current conditions of life. 11. Wherever decisions of the international tribunals mentioned above oppose the laws of the Bible and work against them, and wherever they contradict or even strive against the basic positions of the Bible, they will have no validity and are essentially null and void. 12. This court will decide its cases according to the inspiration of the Bible and its laws. Its considerations will include opinions of the judges, the rules of natural justice, customary and normative rules of deliberation. The judges will endeavor to learn from the traditions of every nation and their experiences and take into account considerations of justice and kindness. 13. Every well-known ethic society that has its own language, traditions, and customs will have the right to appear in judgment before this court, including sovereign states or groups of states. So in other words, they're planning to make states of the United States and anywhere, you know, where there's a governing body to be subject to their rule and to their laws and to their thoughts of how justice should go. According to their interpretation of the Bible, then it says, last year, a world creation concert was held adjacent to the Temple Mount. During a ceremony held at the concert, representatives from Honduras, Guatemala, and Mexico signed an agreement with the Sanhedrin to accompany the people of God as people's nations and individuals towards establishing the Temple in Jerusalem as a house of prayer for all nations, as prophesied in the Bible. So what I just read were basically the concepts of how the 70 nations are going to perform and behave under the world 
court of the Sanhedrin in Jerusalem as the governing body of the world. And that is what their plan is. And I wanted to revisit this article because it spelled it out. Rabbi Glazerson actually called it a new world organization. God is the judge. And he said he will judge his own people.